Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue to celebrate the victory Jesus won on Easter, same victory we are sharers in, and that can, we can live out in this present life, right here, right now, as we face the many challenges, storms, and tests, and trials of life. We can emerge victorious because of the Easter resurrection. Amen. In the response of thanks, let us worship our God this morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbors as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Dearly beloved, let us come into the presence of the Almighty God, praying together as we kneel. Together, most, most merciful, merciful God, God I, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first proclamation of the Word of God is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. The reading. And the congregation of those who believe were one, were one of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all, for there was not a needy person among them. And all who were owners of the land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet and they would be distributed to each one as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the responsorial psalm, which is today is Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, coming down upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever.
Jesus will come and fill the skies. All who have lived in him will rise. Oh, what a sight, lift up your eyes. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus, our hope, our joy, our light, fountain of love and peace and light. be seated. A proclamation of the word of God from the first letter of St. John, chapter 1 and 2. The reading. There was from the beginning what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with, with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write, so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him, and announced to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with, the one, with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our own and not for ours only, but also for those of the world, of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. What we have heard, what we, we beheld, and what our hands handled concerning the word of life, this we proclaim to you that you also may, be, may believe with us. Lord be with you with your, your spirit may the Lord be on our minds on our lips and on our hearts as we hear his holy gospel the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to st. John 
chapter 20. Glory to you, Lord Christ. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here your finger and see my hands, and reach here your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believe. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Second Sunday of Easter, usual gospel for this is the scene where the disciples lock themselves in a room for fear of the Jews, you know, fearing for their lives. May, you know, they, they arrested Jesus, executed him. They might do the same to them. So they lock themselves in. They, you know, uh, went into a voluntary ECQ, if I may say so, right? The thing is, though, like St. Paul said in his letter to the Romans, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor death, depth, nor height, nor pandemics, or viruses, or sickness, or poverty, or loss of job. Uh, nothing, not even, not even the obstacles we set up to keep God out and lock him out, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. His love is greater than our fears, than our doubts, than our self-condemnation, and our weaknesses. John said in his epistle that God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things, including our struggles, including our doubts. And nothing stops him from being merciful, from forgiving and bestowing his peace, because that's just his nature, ever blessing, ever desiring the good of others. That is our God, and that's the image uh, and likeness we were created uh, in. Notice the first word that Jesus spoke after his resurrection, 
after inaugurating the new creation, the new world, the first word that came out of his mouth was peace. Actually, our English word falls short of the Hebrew, which is shalom, which is a, a, a wish for not just peace, but prosperity, for well-being, for health, for, for abundance, for abundance of blessing, for fullness of life. And <clears throat> that indicates as well that the new world, the new creation, the life of the world to come we're looking forward to is founded on that peace, prosperity, and love for all mankind, right? And he showed them his wounds. His wounds are reminders of the atrocity that was uh, done to him, the, injust the gross injust injustice that it was done to him and the sufferings he in that was inflicted upon him. Yet, there was no vengeance in his heart, in his mind, and in his words. Only a wish of well-being for the very people who vowed that they would die for him and yet denied him and deserted him at a very difficult time. And then these undeserving disciples were the recipients of the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them, into them, the Holy Spirit. They were not in the best spiritual shape they did not deserve this grace, this gift. Yet Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them. Into whom? <clears throat> the assembled, called out people of God, the ecclesia, the church. Uh, the psalm that we read earlier says that uh, it is good to behold brothers dwelling together, assembling together in unity. It's good and pleasant to see that. And then goes on and says, that's where the Lord, that in that assembly, that's where the Lord commanded the blessing, which is life forever, which is shalom. In the assembly of the church, and of the righteous. Of course, we cannot do that now physically, but we can still find ways, thank God for technology, and, and be... Uh, in solidarity with the church. But those present and close enough to Jesus received his breath. Those who were, if I can patent this, you know, I'll coin this word, if those who were within breath shot <laughs> received the Holy Spirit. They were close enough. So, just my advice to all of us, don't social distance Jesus. Be within uh, his, like I mentioned, breath shot so that you pick up the Holy Spirit when he breathes it out, uh, breathes him out and, and speaks him into you. In your everyday life, in your quarantine, be close to Jesus, mystically in your prayer time, in your reading of his word, in your meditation, in, in whatever you do, be close to him to receive what he has to impart by his breath. Because if you're absent, like Thomas, and you're not close enough to him, not in his presence, then you, you, you tend to miss out. And then doubt sets in, Right? Now, why was the Holy Spirit given? To empower the disciples and send them on a mission. Jesus said, as the Father sent, has sent me, so I send you. In the same manner, for the same reason I was sent by the Father, I send you. How, why was Jesus sent? John chapter 3, the verse after that famous John three sixteen, Jesus said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved through the forgiveness of their sins. And we have received of 
that grace, you know, that grace upon grace we've received from him. What we have received is grace. What is grace? Something that is undeserved. Something you give to someone who could not deserve it less. The apostles were undeserving. They received the Holy Spirit. But someone would ask, but Bishop, what about justice? The disciples deserted Jesus. They need to pay. You know, they, they should pay for that. Well, that's the spirit of the accuser. Satan, Satan in, in Hebrew. The accuser. One who stands opposite and points a finger. That's what the accuser is. That's what the devil is. And he, what he does is he uses even the Bible to condemn and to, to judge you know, like the Pharisees, when, you know, when they brought the adulterous woman to Jesus, they quoted the Bible. She, she did violate the commandment in the Bible. But what did Jesus do? He forgave her. Forgave her. Jesus forgave her because forgiveness is justice. Hear me. Forgiveness is justice. The, the Reading from 1 John earlier said Gee, God is faithful and just. Just is the root word of justice. Faithful and just to do what? To forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. His forgiveness is justice. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit, right, into the apostles. Holy Spirit is God. He is called in Greek, parakletos. That's what Jesus called him. Uh, in, in our English translations, some, uh, sometimes that word parakletos in Greek is translated helper, sometimes advocate. Actually, that word advocate is also parakletos that was applied to Jesus. When John said in his letter that we have an advocate with God. But parakletos, advocate, means one who is called alongside. To help. Okay? A, an advocate, a parakletos, is someone beside you with his arm on your shoulder, around you, on your shoulder, not standing opposite you with their finger pointed at you. That's the very opposite of the Holy Spirit. That's the enemy. He's the helper. He's the advocate. You know, there's an, uh, an erroneous understanding of justice, even in Christian circles. And on it is founded what is called the doctrine of the penal substitutionary atonement, which gives, makes no room for forgiveness. And it's uh, based on a... a a misinterpretation of a, a word in the English Bible, which is uh, propitiation. Propitiation meaning the act of appeasing a deity or a person. As if God is angry and needs to be appeased, placated, or pacified, or mollified. No. Because that thought evokes a you know, primitive virgin or child sacrifices. They throw somebody in the volcano to appease the anger of uh, this God. And sometimes we reflect that in our doctrines, in our prayers, in our songs. You know, we have one song that, uh, whose a couple of words we changed because it's not very sound doctrinally. And the song I'm talking about has a line that goes, Till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. No, no, wrong, wrong. We don't satisfy. In the first place, God is not angry. God so loved the world, he gave his son. Not in anger, no, in love. Because that's who he is. Because if we, we think that God is angry and Jesus dying on the cross appeased his anger, that portrays God as unforgiving, the opposite of the nature that is his nature that is infinite goodness and mercy. 
Plus, number two, it juxtaposes the Father and the Son. And, you know, as if Jesus saves us not from sin, but from the anger of God. Does God have, you know, uh, does he have to take his wrath out on, his, uh, on someone in order to forgive? And then he chooses a, an innocent, sinless person, his son no less, to vent his anger on? Is that justice? Would you do that to your son? Of course not. God's anger did not kill Jesus. Our sinfulness did. Anyway, the, the, the Old Testament equivalent of that word propitiation is mercy seat. I'd like to read from, um, from uh, the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 25. I'll just uh, abbreviate uh, the reading, but um, I'll start reading from, chapter, from verse 17, Exodus 25. God commanding Moses, you shall make a mercy seat. Mercy there, you know, in my Bible has a, a, a note there that says mercy means propitiatory. Propitiatory. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, uh, and then gives the dimensions. You shall make two cherubim of gold at the two, and, and put them at the two ends of the mercy seat. One at one end, the other at the other end. And then you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and inside the ark, you shall put the testimony, the law, which I will give to you. There, at the mercy seat, between the cherubim, there I will meet with you. And from, the mercy, from above the mercy seat, from between the cherubim, which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you. That's why we sing that song, Commune with Me. Between the wings of the cherubim. Because that's where Jesus is, and he speaks through Jesus. And what does he speak? Mercy, grace, peace, blessing, life forever. Mercy, see. Doesn't that remind you of some, something you heard from last Sunday? Mary in the, to, in the tomb? Didn't she encounter two angels, cherubim? One at the foot, the feet of Jesus, where Jesus had been laying, and the other at the head, beneath the wings of the cherubim, the mercy seat, Jesus giving his life. The mercy seat is the lid that covers the Ark of the Covenant, inside of which is the, the commandments, the law, which all men break. But it's over, uh, superimposed, covered. Uh, you know, in, in other words, God put a lid on our charge sheet, if I may put it that way. Because God is merciful. Uh, a Jewish, famous Jewish philosopher said that the mercy seat is the symbol of God's gracious power. I'll give you an assignment, okay? Write this down. Write the, these scriptures down. Romans 3.25. You'll see it on screen. Hebrews 2.17. 1 John 2.2. 2, 1 John 4.10. Those verses contain the English word propitiation. I want you to replace the word propitiation with the symbol of God's gracious power. See what difference it will make. St. Paul said in, in his letter to the Colossians, when you were dead in your sins, God made you alive with Christ and forgave your sins, having canceled the charge of your legal indebtedness, which stood against you and condemned you. He's taken it away. He's nailed it to the cross. He has canceled the statement against you that's, that condemns you, that says, that points a finger at you and says, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty. Cancel that. Put a lid on that. So that where sin increased, 
grace abounds all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, so grace would reign to eternal life through Christ. That's what St. Paul said to the Romans in chapter 5 of his letter to them. So instead of, you know, what we call the righteous indignation and pointing out the wrong in the name of justice, God cancels the charges against us. God forgives us. And he calls that forgiveness justice. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. Grace. That's why it's called grace. Unmerited favor. It's God's doing. It's a gift. We didn't earn it. Jesus is a reflection of that grace of God. It's not, you know, we don't have a good cop, bad cop in, in the Son and the Father. No. No. So, we go back to the Gospel, which says, uh, which, which has Jesus telling his disciples, if you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. If you don't forgive the sins, their sins, they will be retained. Jesus is not giving them a choice because just prior to that, he told them, as the Father sent me, I also send you. What was the purpose Jesus sent into the world? The Son, the, the, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved through the forgiveness of their sins. And in the same way, that is our purpose, to forgive sins. Our mission is to proclaim God's forgiveness, not to evaluate who deserves it or not. Like I said, you know, but, but people don't deserve it. Exactly, that's why it's called grace. You know, we live in a world that is a, a parched, much of it is a parched wilderness, dry and waterless. We are called, like the song says, to flood the nations with grace and mercy and forgiveness and peace and blessing. Why? Because we've received the same. Freely we have received, we are to freely give. Because when we forgive sins, we proclaim God's gracious power and mercy. John, again, in his epistle, going back to the reading earlier, he said, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have touched and tasted, the goodness and mercy and grace of, of God, we proclaim to you. Why? He says, why? So that our joy may be made complete. Not so we can earn God's grace, it's been given, but so that our joy may be full. Because knowing God gives us joy, but making Him known makes that joy full. That's the way it is in the kingdom of our God. We stand. Together, let us profess the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only begotten, begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before, before all worlds, God of God, light, light of light, very God of the very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory 
to judge, to judge the, the living and the dead, whose, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Dearly beloved, as the Father sent Christ, so our Lord sends us. Let us pray for the faithful hearts to follow that call. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you send forth your people into the workplace, may we bring living hope. As you, as you send, send forth, forth your, your people into, into the marketplace, marketplace may, may we bring, bring divine, divine protection. protection. As you, as you send forth your people into the communities, may we bring loving forgiveness. As, as you, you send forth your people into the educational, educational institutions, institutions, may we bring spiritual wisdom. As you send forth your people among the unbelieving, may we bring saving faith. As, as you, you send, send forth your people amidst your enemies, May we bring abundant redemption. As you send forth your people among the suffering, may we bring complete healing. As you send forth your people amidst the sorrowful, may we bring inexpressible joy. Grant us the means to reach more people with your truth. Grant us your corporate petition. Together. Almighty God and King, our dwelling place in all generations, owner of the earth and all it contains, grant unto us our allotted inheritance, we pray, and the grace to build upon it, facilities in which your people, being restored in your image and ever growing in love for you, might become a habitation of your presence and ministers of your life. To, to the, the glory, glory of Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this point, we would like to pray for a couple, a faithful couple in our parish, uh, June and Remy Magdaluyo, who will celebrate tomorrow their 40th, 40th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. God bless your union. <laughs> Brother June, Sister Remy, I want to pray for you at this time. <clears throat> Immer, if you're near them, just extend your hand toward them. O oh, eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, send your blessing upon your servants, June and Remy, whom we bless in your name, that as Isaac and Rebekah lived faithfully together, so these persons may continue to perform and keep the vow and covenant made between them. And may they ever remain in perfect love and peace together through many years ahead and live according to your laws. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you, and so fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace. You may so live together in this life, that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. And Lord, at this time, uh, as we are beset by all these challenges around us, we pray that you surround Remy and June, Immer, their whole entire household with your protection, with your peace, with your blessing, with your assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them. 
They have been faithful, Lord. Reward them by your grace and just assure them of your love and continue to use them as instruments and channels of your peace, of your blessing, and your grace and mercy. Bless this couple, O Lord, and their household. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you, Sister June. I mean, Brother June, Sister Remy. Have a wonderful celebration today and tomorrow. We continue to lift up to you, O Lord, those among us who have needs. We especially lift up to you Jane Utenko Parena, who passed on. Lord, we ask that you receive her into the arms of your mercy. Let perpetual light shine upon her and grant her eternal rest. We also pray for those who are suffering from different kinds of physical illness, Lord. Estella, the Lim, Luf, uh, the Lim family, the Restaro family, Mike, Nerys, Connie, Joy, Francis, Anna Marie, Veronica, Willis, Eugene, and all who are struggling physically, Lord, and are being challenged by their, in, the, in their faith. Assure them of your love, your healing, your protection, and your peace. And grant unto this generation everlasting God grace to believe that Jesus is the Christ and that believing we may have life in his name. We ask this through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Your spirit. Share with your brothers and sisters around you the peace of Christ. Peace, peace be with you. you. Peace be with you all at home. We will be starting a catechism class. Uh, it will begin on May, to, I mean, not May, April, this month, April 25, uh, which is what, two Sundays from now. We'll run for one hour from four o'clock in the afternoon to five, four Sundays. So uh, we will uh, set up a registration online, Cathedral of the King CEC Facebook page. You can register your children who are of age and have not been confirmed, okay? And then we, we aim, you know, depending on this improvement of the situation, but we, we plan to uh, administer the sacrament of confirmation on Pentecost, which is the last Sunday of uh, May. But if not, at least your children will have finished the course and we can postpone the confirmation, but they're, they're ready and equipped. Most, more importantly, they've learned the things of God through the catechism. So watch out for that. Parents who have children that can be candidates for that. God is good. All, all the time. time. And we are thankful. All, all the time. time. Let us express that thankfulness in our giving this morning. Those at home, Find a way to give. Uh, we give you information how through banks and, and other things. Don't stop giving because our God doesn't stop blessing. Bless the Lord with your gifts. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing that we can be born again. Ringing, they're singing, Christ is risen from the dead. The angel among the tombstone said, He is risen, just as He said. Quickly now, go tell His disciples that Jesus Christ is no longer dead. 
world.
good night. Praise you, Lord. Truly, Lord, we will celebrate your life in us. We will celebrate being alive. We will celebrate in every day of our lives, Lord. Sa kahit ano pang pagsubok yan, magtatagumpay kami because you are with us. Whatever we face, we will face with victory because you have given us that resurrection life. Praise you, Lord. We declare your glory this morning, Lord, and in everything that we do. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, oh glorious, create in us a
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the body of Christ. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become the blood of Christ. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we bring these tithes and offerings before you. They will be used in your church for the work you have set before us and the furthering of your kingdom. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Amen. We come to the table of the Lord, the mercy seat, where he speaks to us, where we commune with him, where he has sacrificed his own life, and imparts life to us as well. That's why we receive that. And it's power. Power for us to overcome whatever we face. You who are suffering from sickness, you who have, are, have been infected by the virus, you who have problems with your blood pressure, with your heart, with your arthritis, with your sugar, listen to what we sang earlier hear the bells ringing they're singing that we can be healed right now Amen. through the life of our lord hear the bells ringing they're singing christ that will reveal it now the angels they all surround us they're ministering ministering jesus power quickly now reach out and receive it Amen. yours is the healing today because by Jesus stripes you I everyone else we are all healed Amen. receive it now for this could be your glorious hour we don't deny the existence of the virus but we deny its power over the power of the blood of Jesus that's what we stand on by faith with you Thank God for his amazing grace. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up unto, unto the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give him thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sin of the world by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exalt in your praise even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim give you praise father most holy for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love you formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care 
so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your fellowship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered covenant with man, and through the prophets taught him to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. That we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. You sent the Holy Spirit, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Please kneel. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may be May they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, taking the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Please stand. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which you yourself have provided for your church. And grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one cup, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Therefore, Lord, remember now, Craig, our patriarch, me, your servant, and the whole order of bishops. Remember all the clergy, especially those who take part in the offering, as well as your people gathered here before you, and those at home, seeking you with sincere hearts. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with all your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. <clears throat> for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. 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 of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof. but only, only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. Solidarity and unity with those watching us, participating online. Let us pray with them the prayer for receiving spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus I believe that you are present in the most, the most holy sacrament. sacrament. I, I love, love you above all things, and, and I desire to receive you into my soul. soul. Since, Since I cannot at this moment receive, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I remind you of what Jesus said. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. So therefore receive the grace of God. Receive his Holy Spirit for your healing, for your empowerment, for your fullness of life. It doesn't stop there though. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Now become a channel of his blessing, instrument of his peace, his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness. We are called to pronounce that to others. Undeserving? Yes, just like us. But our calling, our mandate, is to proclaim God's mercy and forgiveness to all. As we do, our joy will be complete. That's God's promise. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The, the maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, earth. and earth. 
Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love, and working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. Christ is risen from the dead, giving life to those in the tomb. Hallelujah, hallelujah.